key changes to my freelance web design business allowed me to go from doing one website about every six to eight weeks to launching closer to one website per month while working fewer hours and honestly enjoying the process a lot more. Looking back, there was three main changes I made that allowed this to be possible. And today I wanna to talk through each one of those because they're things I wish I had known when I was first starting out as a freelancer. The first change was getting a lot more serious and intentional about the systems and tools that I rely on. And I wanna be very specific about what I mean by this and how I would recommend going about this. So in the beginning, I figured if I just kept doing more and more projects, my systems and processes would kind of just naturally sort themselves out over time. And practice and repetition definitely help, but at some point I realized that this was not really enough. So I decided to start blocking one full day per week to work on my business, which honestly felt like a big deal because nobody pays you for this type of work. And I would call these days TTPD days. And no, that's not the 2024 Taylor Swift album. This stood for tools, templates, processes, and documentation. So things that would save me time in the longer term. And a few examples of initiatives I tackled on these days were I created a big set of go-to typeface pairings so that I would stop spending so many hours surfing the internet, looking for fonts on every project. I researched and experimented with different AI for photography generating tools until I had a reliable way to create high quality imagery for my websites. And again, this was so I could stop endlessly scrolling on stock image websites. The common thread was really just things I was consistently losing many hours or even days to on my projects. And each of these initiatives never exactly felt urgent to address and there was no immediate reward or gratification after completing them, unlike when you press go live on a website. But just like any investment, their value really compounds over time. And the key, at least for me, was carving out space in the calendar, whether that's one day per week like I did or one hour per day, however your brain works best. But speaking for myself, these tasks would never get tackled unless I had a block of time in my calendar staring at me in the face, telling me to sit down and make the investment on a regular basis. After I got my systems and processes in better shape, I then turned my attention to another bottleneck, which was me. I know that outsourcing or delegating, subcontracting, whatever you want to call it, it's not for everyone. Some people really want to be true solopreneurs and I respect that. But speaking for myself, getting comfortable delegating some tasks was a game changer for my time. It's really what allowed me to take on more projects and bigger websites without being busier and working more and more hours. So what I realized is that delegation is a skill, just like learning Figma or framer development. And from my experience, it's great to start building that skill early on before you reach the point of total overwhelm. So here's some of the things that I think it can be great for web designers to consider delegating. Supporting pages, so non-home pages for your web designs, website copywriting, animations or illustrations, the development of your websites, business admin tasks, of course. So most of us have one or two things on this list that we're doing ourselves, even though they're not really in our zone of genius. So even though we're either slow at them or they're just not our biggest strength. So I found that acknowledging this and handing those things off can free up entire days of time, which you can then reinvest into the, those longer term impact items we talked about in part one, or you can use that time to find new clients 
or just relax and recharge in order to avoid burnout. The third big change I made was to stop prioritizing short-term wins over my long-term vision. So in the early days of my freelance business, I was definitely operating from a scarcity mindset. I would chase short-term wins because they felt like momentum, but a lot of these would pull me away from the kind of business I was really trying to build. So I would say yes to pretty much everything. And this included long lists of marketing assets that I didn't actually want to be offering to lower budget website builds with functionality that wasn't in my specialty or that was on a platform that I didn't really like working on. And these would all give me a little income boost, but they would also slow me down and make it really hard to build repeatable systems. And they took time away from seeking out the right fit type of projects. It took me maybe six months to realize that I needed to get comfortable sometimes saying no, which I found to be surprisingly hard, especially when you've got bills to pay. But if you are constantly busy, yet also frustrated with the type of work you're doing, it might be a sign, like it was for me, that you need to start turning down a few things to make room for the kind of work you want to be doing. And this might look like skipping the next low paying, not great fit project and instead taking a few TTPD days to create a concept website that represents your dream client and then using that to then go out and pitch yourself to your ideal clients. So I was super uncomfortable saying no in the beginning, but when I finally did, I would treat that time that I bought back with a lot of intention. To review, here's the three shifts that helped me shorten my project timelines and take on more projects without working more hours. Number one, setting aside regular time to invest in the foundational tool set of my business. So starting with one day per week, or you could do one hour per day. Number two, learning to delegate some parts of projects. So you could consider whatever you enjoy the least or that you're the slowest at. Start with something small just to get used to this. And lastly, saying no to short-term wins in order to make space for bigger impact, better fit work. And I really do see each one of these as interconnected. So if you've been considering trying one of these, but you needed an extra nudge, consider this your sign to give one or all of them a go. Good luck.